G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Outback Adventures. And in today's video, it's a little bit different. Um, I was going to show you around the Carnarvon Space and Technology Museum, which is just on the outskirts of Carnarvon. And it was a major satellite communications centre during the Apollo manned space flights during the 60s and 70s. And Carnarvon was a focal point in terms of being a reference point for uh, the NASA uh, space program and apparently they, they were tracking satellites to within 10 metres of, of this location in Carnarvon. So it was quite an important um, facility. So we're up here today and we'll, we'll, we'll show you around and show you the various parts that, that make up this museum. This is a, um, it's a satellite tracking unit that was actually field mounted. Uh, and this was a temporary installation, um, the Carnarvon tracking station in the early 60s late 60s and early 70s. It was designed as a, a, a laser ranging uh, satellite so it could measure the distance from Earth orbiting satellites using a laser to detect the satellite's variation from its predicted orbit. Now this is a replica of the um, one of the rockets that was used to put man into, into space. And this is a replica of the Mercury Redstone rocket. And I'll just show you this board around here. And basically it shows the Mercury project. And this being an MR7, the MR7 was launched in May 61 and it carried astronaut Alan Shepard. So it sort of shows you Cape Canaveral launch here, went through its altitude program, and when the capsule deployed, landed back in the sea and then it was recovered. This is the museum's entrance. I hope you can see this. This is actually the uh, simulator for the command module actually and you get to go in it and lay down in it and actually experience what it was like. So we're about to do that now. T-minus three minutes and counting, T-minus three, we are go with all elements of the mission at this time. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting, we're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We're just past the two minute mark in the countdown, T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Three miles high, velocity 9,300 feet per second. 
These are instrument panels that um, the station used to monitor uh, and communicate with NASA in America. I think the lighting might be a bit poor, I apologise for that. Um, yeah, what they did in these panels, we can probably do in a computer the size of a laptop nowadays, but it's pretty incredible stuff when you think back in the late 60s they were using all this for their comms and also for navigating a man in space. This is the Apollo Saturn V um, rocket assembly and it also has a description here. So I'll just show you in the model. This is the, this is the entire unit. Let me just pan across here. That's the entire unit in its segments. So starting at stage one is the main booster rocket that gets it off the ground. A Inter interstage ring comes off this stage two continues the thrust into space then your instrument panel and your lunar house lunar module is housed in this piece and then that's your lunar module your little service modules in there and that's the little bit that comes back so the lunar module landed on the moon while um, in Apollo 11's case Michael Collins was still in the little little um, command module and then the, the lunar module docked with that and that's the bit that came back so there's a whole lot of stuff out there still floating around. Well, this display here is the Carnarvon and the race for space and I'll just sort of show you through here Project Mercury started in May 1961 through to Project Gemini so that was Gemini 4, 6A, Gemini 8, 10 and 12 then you got into the Apollo missions uh, Apollo 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way up to um, Apollo 17. And then you had the Skylab missions in mid-70s up until the late 70s. This display shows Andy Thomas, uh, Australian astronaut, who came to Carnarvon in 2014 um, to open the phase two of this museum and his achievements were that he flew the Endeavour space mission uh, in 1996. In 1998 he travelled aboard Endeavour to the Russian space station Mir, where he spent 141 days before being brought back to Earth on the shuttle Discovery. His third and fourth missions were on board Discovery in 2001-2005, both to the International Space Station. And his handprints are in this, in this plaque here. Well, we're inside the um, OTC Carnarvon room here and there's a music in the background. Basically just describes um, the overseas telecommunications in Australia established in 1966. Initially the uh, Earth Station had a 42 foot antenna. The whole station including equipment buildings and staff cost three million dollars and was completed in under 12 months. They installed further equipment during 67 and we'll go outside and look at the big dish uh, 69 a 97 foot steerable antenna was completed replaced the 42 foot we saw earlier uh, that, sorry that was installed earlier all right so um, there's some pictures of the again apologize for the poor lighting um, I'm relying on the GoPro to pick all this up Okay, and here's some of the equipment that was used for the communications, the radio equipment there. And photos of the real installation, and photos of the antennas outside. Alright, we're gonna have we're gonna have a crack at the planetarium. There's a sign here that says 20 people at a time. If you're claustrophobic, mm, maybe don't go in. 
Um, you may experience a motion sickness, but shut your eyes and it'll, it might get better. So, um, all right, worst thing can happen is that we give it a go and don't like it. The planetarium show was really, really good. However, the lighting was, was too poor for the camera to pick up anything, but I guarantee that it's a really good 18 minutes well spent listening to the history of the universe. Uh, yeah, so just one more of the attractions here at the Carnarvon Space and Technology Museum. This graphic is a history of manned space programs starting in uh, 1958-63 was the Mercury program. The Gemini series was 1965-66. to 66. The Apollo program went from 68 to 72. Skylab went from 73 to 74 and then finally the Space Shuttle 1981 up to 2011. This uh, represents the Apollo uh, series of missions, Man to the Moon, um, and there were six missions in total. Apollo 13 is probably the, the, the one most known for its Houston, we have a problem. Um, but it did, did not land on the moon, but it did take uh, photographs and send them back to Earth. There was a moon buggy, we will probably remember that getting around in the early 70s. Now, Skylab was the first space station and Skylab was a working laboratory orbiting the Earth from 73 to 79. Had a workshop, a solar observatory and other systems on board. Um, it was launched unmanned and the station was damaged after, shortly after it was launched. A uh, meteorite shower struck it and the manned missions on Skylab included 73 and 74 using Apollo command service modules. Um, plans are made to refurbish and reuse Skylab using a space shuttle to boost it in orbit, into orbit and repair it. However, development of the shuttle was delayed and Skylab re-entered Earth's atmosphere and disintegrated in 1979. Debris striking portions of Western Australia. And I think if you go down to Esperance, you can actually go to the museum in Esperance and there's pieces of Skylab that were actually found um, and is on display there as well. Now this, this is a full-size um, capsule mock-up from a Gemini uh, rocket and we're going to have a look inside. Uh, oh! Bang me head! Come outside now, and here is the um, 30 metre antenna dish. And there's a couple of smaller ones here, antennae of various sizes. And there's a this, I'm not sure this is a rocket. Carnarvon Tracking Station was involved in using Australian design rockets to launch high altitude density experiments. This trailer was used as the launch station where engineers sat inside to fire and view the rocket launches. It was rescued in December 19 from a plantation out in Carnarvon. So that's, that's an interesting looking observation vehicle. Uh, apologies for the wind noise, it's quite windy up here at the moment. This is an acquisition aid antenna. used at the NASA Carnarvon tracking station and the acquisition aid antenna as it's called, try saying that fast 10 times, independent automatically tracking antenna designed to assist the main telemetry antenna in acquiring a target or tracking during close in passes around the earth. 
And this is another acquisition aid antenna used at the NASA Musia, Musia tracking station for the Mercury program and as a backup in Carnarvon for the Gemini and Apollo programs. We recovered from Alice Springs metal recyclers and donated to the museum here and restored. Now this is a 30 meter antenna that was used by the Carnarvon tracking station and you can't go in the bottom bit, it's locked, but there's a gate. No, there's a walkway up here, so we'll go and see what that's... Again, apologies if the wind noise is interfering with the audio, but it's freezing cold and it's windy as up here this morning in Carnarvon. Let's see how far we can get up here. Oh, I oh, know, you can just get to this first landing. Oh. Uh, there's some more yeah, satellite over there on the other side of the, of the museum. Wow, well, it's a pretty sizable antenna. This display shows a piece of space junk that actually came from um, a Gemini 5 Titan vehicle, launch vehicle. And I'm not sure if you can see it, it's, um, you probably can't see that very well, unfortunately. It's a spherical pressure vessel would have had um, fuel in it. And the piece that's been cut away was sent to NASA for verification. And it was found, it says here, it was found on September 65 at Merkanuka, which is near Morawa. Now this is the sugar scoop or Cashorn antenna, which was originally uh, installed here in Carnarvon and it says here that the sugar scoop was famous on the 21st of July 69 the day the Apollo 11 moon landing relaying Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon from NASA's Honeysuckle Creek tracking station in Canberra to Perth's TV audience via Murray Earth Station the first live broadcast into Western Australia the antenna is believed to be the last of its kind in the world I showed you that um, display inside showing the Cashorn um, sugar scoop antenna. Well, this is it here outside, and it's quite a feat of engineering. I'll just show you up in the uh, in the mouth of this sugar scoop. You can see why it's called a sugar scoop. If I can get back far enough. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, tour of the Carnarvon Space and Technology Museum. Unfortunately I couldn't show a lot of it because the, the lighting inside is, is nice for viewing the displays but unfortunately it's a bit dark for the camera and I wasn't going to bring a video light in. I thought that was a bit rude. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like the, the video, uh, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'll put a link here for you. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'll put a link in the description for buy me a coffee. Uh, any support for the channel is greatly appreciated. It costs a fair bit to keep the channel running and create these videos, which I enjoy doing and sharing with you guys. So uh, yeah, that'd be much appreciated. If you like to see the full video of the two week tour we did up north, I'll put a link up here. You'll be able to see that um, and check that out as well. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.